Nairobi, a city pulsing with ambition, towers of glass and steel pierced the sky. In the heart of it all, a plot of land shimmered with potential. Fourteen Riverside, Cape Holdings, a prominent Kenyan developer, saw an opportunity, a chance to create a statement, a beacon of luxury and commerce. They envisioned 14 Riverside as a masterpiece, but they needed a partner, a financial powerhouse to fuel their vision. Enter Synergy Industrial Credit, a firm known for its bold investments. A deal was struck. Millions of shillings flowed. The dream of 14 Riverside was alive. Synergy wasn't just providing funds. They wanted a stake in the action. They demanded customized office space within the conquer. Tailor made to their specifications, a symbol of their investment. This customization would prove to be a crucial point of contention. The seeds of discord were sown even as the foundations were laid. The construction of 14 Riverside was a symphony of concrete, glass and steel, but behind the scenes a different tune was playing, a discordant melody of disagreements and broken promises. Synergy's customized office space, it wasn't materializing as agreed, delays mounted, Frustration simmered. Synergy started to question Cape Holdings' commitment. They smelled a rat. Something wasn't right. Then came the bombshell. Synergy demanded a refund, a complete withdrawal from the project. They accused Cape Holdings of misleading them, of misrepresenting the project's progress. The partnership, once strong, was now teetering on the brink of collapse. Cape Holdings denied the accusation. They insisted they were committed to the project, to fulfilling their end of the bargain. But the damage was done. The relationship was fractured. Legal threats filled the air. The battle for 14 Riverside was about to begin. With no end in sight to the bitter dispute, both sides agreed to arbitration. A neutral third party to weigh the evidence and deliver a binding decision. The fate of 14 Riverside and millions of shillings hung in the balance. The arbitration was long and arduous. Months stretched into years as lawyers for both sides presented their cases. Synergy argued they had been misled, left in the dark about crucial aspects of the project. Cape Holdings countered that they were the victims of Synergy's impatience, that they had always acted in good faith. Finally, the arbitrator reached a decision. Synergy had won. They were entitled to a refund, a partial victory, but a victory nonetheless. Cape Holdings was ordered to pay back a significant portion of Synergy's investment, but this was just the beginning. Dissatisfied with the arbitrator's ruling, Cape Holdings decided to fight back. They took the case to the High Court, seeking to overturn the arbitration award. The stakes were higher than ever. This wasn't just about money anymore, it was about reputation, about principle. A Section 4. Billions at stake, the legal battlefield heats up. The High Court became the new battleground. Lawyers for Synergy and Cape Holdings locked horns in a fierce legal duel. Complex arguments about contract law and arbitration clauses flew back and forth. The courtroom crackled with tension. Synergy, emboldened by their arbitration victory, upped the ante. They increased their claim. It wasn't just about the initial investment anymore. They wanted compensation for lost profits for the potential earnings they had been denied. The sum ballooned to a staggering kick 1.7 billion. Cape Holdings was reeling. They had gambled on the High Court, overturning the arbitration award. But the gamble had backfired. The court upheld the arbitrator's decision. In fact, they went further. They ruled in favor of Synergy's increased claims. The Quiche 1.7 billion judgment sent shockwaves through the Kenyan business community. This wasn't just a legal battle anymore, it was a high-stakes poker game and Cape Holdings had just blinked. They faced the very real prospect of losing a prime piece of Nairobi real estate. Section 5. Delay tactics and mounting tensions. Defeat hung heavy in the air for Cape Holdings, but they weren't finished yet. They launched a series of appeals taking the case to higher and higher courts. Each appeal brought with it a glimmer of hope, a chance, however slim, of overturning the judgment. Every court appearance, every legal maneuver bought Cape Holdings precious time. Time to regroup, to strategize, and perhaps most importantly, to delay the inevitable. Synergy, meanwhile, grew increasingly frustrated. They had won time and again in the courts. Yet, they were no closer to collecting their due. 
As the years dragged on, Synergy accused Cape Holdings of deliberately delaying the process of using every legal trick in the book to avoid paying up. The accusations were heated, the denials even more so. The battle for 14 Riverside had become a war of attrition. Section 6. The auction looms. A desperate gambit. The legal wrangling continued, but a new threat emerged on the horizon. The auction block, Synergy, tired of waiting, had obtained court orders to seize an auction off 14 Riverside. It was a bold move, a power play designed to force Cape Holdings' hand. The news sent shockwaves through the business community. 14 Riverside, once a symbol of ambition, was now a cautionary tale. A reminder of the risks, the potential pitfalls of high-stakes real estate deals gone wrong? Potential buyers circled, sensing an opportunity. For Cape Holdings, it was a desperate situation. The auction, if it went ahead, would be a disaster. They would lose 14 Riverside, their pride and joy at a fraction of its true value. They needed a miracle, a last-minute reprieve. With the auction looming, Cape Holdings made a final, desperate plea. They asked the courts for more time. Time to negotiate a settlement with Synergy, to find a way out of the legal quagmire they were trapped in. Their fate and the fate of 14 Riverside hung precariously in the balance. 